You want a gunnerism, here's what it is, okay? The only thing we own in life is our experiences. All that money does is allow you into a few more exclusive experiences. Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey. Today you join me here in a much more tropical location than normal, as we are here in Hawaii to go check out the amazing Porsche collection of Gunner Mensch. Let's go. I am Gunnar Mensch. I live here in Kamuela on the Big Island of Hawaii. And uh, I've been a Porsche lover my entire life. So what was the first Porsche you ever owned? A 914 back in Anaheim Hills, California. Wow. No, actually, no, 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 I stand corrected. I actually bought a 66 912 basket case that was sitting out in a field uh, when I was in high school back in Vermont and the car, I found out who the owner was. Uh, the owner was the guy who created Sesame Street, John Stone. And I went to his house in Sandgate, Vermont, met with him, and I bought the car for like 200 bucks. Wow. It, it was rusting through the floorboards and stuff, and I, I took the carbs off and I played the car a little bit, and I eventually sold it to uh, some policeman from upstate New York, whatever, for about 300 bucks before I moved down to New Jersey at the time. But it was that was my first Porsche that I owned that I actually bought for myself. Wow. And and I had I had another I have another 66 912, but it's down in Kona right now. It's rusted out, the pillars are rusted out, floorboards are all rusted out, everything it's it's too far gone. So I'm parting out the car. I've got the motor up here, I got the transmission, all matching numbers and stuff. But you know just I was gonna have my grandson, I was gonna give it to him and have him weld a new pan into it and go through the car, restore it. But when you look at it these days, you know, it's like put dump $50,000 into a car that's worth $50,000 when you don't. So it's like, what do you do? So it's it's just one of those, you know, it's, it's too far gone projects and that sort of thing. Like the 75 914 out there. Of course, this is my 76 914 with the matching numbers engine sitting right over there. I had a spare two liter motor, like people have spare motors, right? I had a spare two liter motor and I had it built to a 2.4 liter, about 150 horse with the, with the uh, dual Weber carbs and a balanced crankshaft and everything else. So it's, you know, it's, it's a wicked engine, um, but we're, we're balancing, we're trying to figure out the right carburetor combination on the thing. I've got 44s in there right now. I was an ASC certified licensed mechanic for years, okay? I had a mobile license in the state of Hawaii. So, you know, I traveled to the car. I used to have an old 83 944 and I put seven toolboxes and a floor jack into that. And I'd go oh to God. the people's homes and I'd repair their Toyotas or their, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, their Nissans, whatever. I'd, I'd go do work. I'd do head jobs, everything but transmissions. This car is special. I bought this from a friend who used to be the track doctor at Laguna Seca back in the 80s. And it was his dad's car. And I, it was, he lost his parking spot in his building in LA. So he said, God, are you interested in buying the car? And I said, hell yeah. So I bought the car and literally drove it up to Ren Sport 5 back in 2015. Wow. Okay, so that's why it has the Ren V license plate on it. So I drove it up there and drove it around. And then in 2018, I had it at Ren Sport, got on the track with it for a track lapse, and then took it and drove my grandson before that. I took my grandson from Vegas to Missouri and back for the Porsche parade at the Lake of the Ozarks and taught him how to drive stick in this car when he turned 16. Nice. He's a 21 year old Marine right now, you know, big tall kid, you know. These are all special cars. Every car I got is special. This is a rare 76 912E. You know what this is? You know what a 912E is? I do not actually. Okay. First time I've heard it. Okay. As a marketing thing, Porsche in 76. Okay, when did the 924 come out? And the 928? 
It was in the 80s. No, it came out in 77. Oh, really? So they weren't ready for the introduction of the new models yet, okay? So in 75, 76, 75 was the end model actually for the 914. They kept producing the car, just changed the numbers, and only made the two later version in 76. Okay, so 76 was the end of the 914. They needed a stopgap car in a loss leader price point for 76. So what they did was they took the 914 motors that they had plenty of, and they adapted it for use. This is a 914 motor in a 911 body. And the first year that the cars were ever hot dip galvanized. So these cars have no rust issues. This is one of eight with electric windows in a 912E. They all came with crank windows besides. So this is a rare, and an uncracked red dashboard. Everything's original, all the, the interior, everything's perfect. So the 912E, the motor weighs about 200 pounds less than a 911 motor does. So the weight ratio is more balanced than a 911. So these actually handle better in cornering than a 76 911. This car here is a unicorn. You know what a unicorn is? A very rare car. This is a paint to sample. 1980 SC Targa with about 85,000 original miles on it. This was ordered at the factory and picked up there. Literally, he said, oh, like, I want the car to match this green. And they painted the car to match that color. This is still original paint on this side of the car. That one's been redone because it had some damage when I got it. And I had it fixed up. The color's not perfect to match, but it's close. So this is the only car this color ever, and it's got every option that was available at the time. It has all leather interior, panels, everything else, dashboard. It has chocolate brown carpet that I had to replace because it was all funked out. It has all leather seats. It has the driving lights. It has the electric uh, reclining uh, antenna. It's the Targa version. It just, it just has everything. It's got air conditioning, which has to be repaired right now. It's like everything has to be repaired when I'm sold. I need to repair it. Strokes should have killed me. Seven years ago, I had two major strokes um, at the same time. The brainstem stroke should have killed me. It took out my entire left side. This was zero. And the second stroke at the same time took out my right eye. So I couldn't see out of my right eye, couldn't focus, and I had zero left left side. And uh, laying in a bed for a couple weeks before I could get into a wheelchair, or a wheelchair to a walker, walker to a cane, and now look at me. I'm, driving on racetracks again. I just got yes, through so. spending the last weekend in Ohio at the 944 Fest, driving a friend's car around the track. You know, when you're, when you're, you know, driving 100 miles an hour on a racetrack, you know, it's just, uh, it's another whole experience. It's just, just feeling, just knowing what to do when you're driving. I drive a lot better than I walk. My 63 356 is all original, unglued, it's had a light breeze spray. Everything is original in it. Uh, it's just a wonderful car with about 130,000 miles on it. It's been to the top of Mauna Kea four times. It has been up there. I have taken it skiing. This is the benchmark marker that I turned into a badge from the top of Mauna Kea. So no other 356 or Porsche that I know of has a benchmark badge from the top of Mauna Kea. This happens in July when the, when the Milky Way is vertical. Okay, so we had to plan being there in July. It took a year to plan to make sure this car would make it up there on its own. And then we had to 
consult with the uh, the scientists, Nobel winning Nobel Award winning scientists, that they would be firing the laser that night. So we have the laser firing from the Keck Observatory. No with Photoshop the here. No Photoshop. This is the real deal. It's a 30 second exposure. And the photographer, my friend Ethan Tweedy, is actually running in front of the car in during this exposure, dragging a flashlight behind him. And the flashlight is illuminating the car, the car to lighting the car without lighting anything else. And you can't see him because he's moving so fast through the image. So this is real, this is real old school, you know, photography in the real sense. Now you've got pretty much every kind of Porsche. You've got Cayennes, 356s, 911s, uh, 914s, 944. What's like, do you have a particular favorite one or? Whichever one I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. So what was your first Porsche? My father's first Porsche, the one I grew up in and can't get the engine sound out of my head, was his 59 1600 Super. Okay, uh, he bought the brand new car in 59. Um, he, in 1960, drove it to his very first Porsche parade in Aspen, Colorado. Wow. From Connecticut to Colorado with a friend who joined him and later moved to Switzerland, back to Switzerland. But he got to the parade, took candid photos of, of Ferry Porsche and all, and, and the parade photos and stuff. But the most amazing thing about that trip is, of course, he was in touch with Eric Felius, and, you know, through that uh, with, uh, with Ferry Porsche. It was the first trip Ferry Porsche ever, take, ever took to come to a Porsche club, a Porsche club of America, uh, uh, a parade, Porsche parade. So it's the first Porsche parade that he ever came to. Um, what happened when Ferry and his wife came here is, if you read the family history, they were very fond of Ford products. Henry Ford was like an idol to them, you know, much as, you know, Ferdinand was to whatever he was doing in Germany. Henry Ford was very much appreciated by the Porsche family. Ferry bought a white Ford station wagon, which he later shipped back to Germany, okay, because he wanted this white Ford station wagon back there. Nobody had one in Germany, you know. So, um, but, so Ferry buys the car and drives it up to Aspen. Very Porsche cannot be seen driving a white Ford station wagon into the Porsche parade, his first one to ever attend. So they made arrangements to meet with my father in a mountain pass outside of Aspen, and Ferry got out of the station wagon and into my father's 1959 1600 Super, and my dad drove Ferry into his very first Porsche parade. My dad met at one point with the Emperor Haile Selassie of Ethiopia in 1954. This is on his official's card and stationery. This is a note from John Glenn. I was an Eagle Scout, but best regards to Gunther. Keep up the good scout work. Hope you get that Eagle, John H. Glenn Jr. John Glenn passed me on my Space Exploration Merit Badge when I was a Boy Scout. And this is a little note here. Gunther and Charlie, myself and my brother Charlie, Vielen Grüß, many greetings, from Uncle Ferry Porsche. Uncle Ferry Porsche, okay? So. You said your roots run deep. Yeah. That's wow. That's amazing. How did you end up on the island of Hawaii? I came out to visit my dad twice. He passed away about uh, six years ago, but uh, he came out here uh, and I was here for his wedding in 1990 and then came for a second visit in 93 and after the second visit I said I just have to live here it felt like home grew up in New England in Vermont Connecticut and it just felt like home when I came here the, uh, the big island is so diverse we have beautiful roads nice people it's a great environment it's just uh, it's just an ideal place to live for me you know so uh, I he was the one who got me to come out here after the second visit, I just 
that's it, you know. Eventually worked at an art gallery that I end up buying. And, uh, you know, so the rest is history. It, it helps to uh, afford my Porsche addiction. <laughs> <laughs> Now you also work on your own cars yourself, and how long have you been working on cars for? I actually um, rebuilt the blown motor on my uh, 1970 VW Bug in a friend's basement in Vermont um, back in 1972. And then went off to college to the University of Vermont and uh, couldn't finish after a year I was looking for a job to work because I was supporting myself since I was 16 actually. You know, uh, moved out of the house early. And uh, I applied for a job at the Volkswagen dealership in Rutland, Vermont at Lindholm Motors. And they took me on board as a somewhat knowledgeable young mechanic with barely any tools. And I took a room at the service manager's house. The service manager's name uh, was um, uh, Hans Hofer. Hans Hofer uh, had previously, before he was the service manager of this dealership in 72 up in Vermont, he was the chief mechanical instructor at Volkswagen of America for eight years. So he moved up there with his wife and his young family and I rented a room at his house besides working at the, at the dealership. So I got air-cooled, schooled 24-7. I just sucked it up so that by the time three months was up, I was the third highest paid mechanic in the whole shop because I was putting out the best work, I was never coming back, I was making, making bank for the dealership, you know, flat rating and everything else. So. Uh, I, I just had an act for it. My mother was a master watchmaker and jeweler, like her two older sisters and, her, and my grandfather. And so I have a, a great ability for four-dimensional thinking, which is three dimensions plus time. So I can imagine an engine working and the innards and stuff like that. I can, I can pretty much visualize it pretty well. Now, on your 944, the Pink Pig, yeah. why did you go with the Pink Pig livery on it? Okay. The first Pink Pig was in 1971, okay? That's the 917-20 that raced to Le Mans and didn't finish. It crashed. It ran out of brake pad, they found out. It hit the brakes, went into a wall, smiled, it was done. It didn't finish the race. But it was in third place at the time before it crashed, before the end of the race. Uh, in 2018, we raced the same livery again with Porsche and won Le Mans in the GT class with the RSR in 2018. Well, 2018 is when we also had, um, I looked at what was going to go on with shipping a car from here to Boca Raton and, black, and back. At the time, shipping to, from Big Island to Boca Raton and back was going to cost 7000 Yikes. So I had a budget. Yikes. I needed to find a car that I liked, that I wanted to keep on the mainland for $7,000. Okay. Found one for $7,000, which was my budget. And I bought it in Massachusetts, shipped it down to Florida, had it checked out, local shops I wasn't really trusting for what work they were going to do. And so I sent it up to my friend George Hussey, okay, at Automobile Atlanta. George his shop, they did the work, changed the rotors, everything else did, did the work that needed to bring it up to snuff. Well, the car still needed paint. It looked terrible. It was black, faded. It looked worse. When you buy a car sight on scene, you never know how bad it really looks. I bought it you know, over the internet with this friend of mine, okay? So I had a dilemma. Was I gonna spend another $8,000, okay, just to, to paint this car? that I spent $7,000 in buying and then X number of dollars in, in fixing up, maintaining. So I looked at the fact that we just won Le Mans with the Pink Pig livery. I loved the livery and nobody else had done a, a, a 951 with the Pink Pig livery up until that time. And so I said, you know what? I need to do that livery on this car. That's why it looks the way it does is because it was a tribute, it's a tribute car to Porsche running in Le Mans 
and winning with that livery. And uh, I'm sticking the eye to everybody who's just got to push forward. Because here I am, a double stroke survivor, heart attack, melanoma, all the rest of the crap. And I'm, I'm on racetracks. I did 10 laps at Indy. I've been on the track at Thunder Hill. I've been three times now on the track at Nelson Ledges. I've been at Pocono. I've been at, you know, other, other tracks with uh, Porsche parades and stuff like that. All these things I've done since I've had my strokes. Hmm. So it's like, you know, a new life, you know, mm -hmm. and just celebrating life and enjoying life. And, that, and these cars are, were the real incentive for me to get better. All right, well, no better way to end the tour than right back here with all the cars in the garage. So a huge thank you to Gunner for this amazing tour of his collection. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel for more content to come. And Gunner, here he is. Aloha.